Hey, this is Chris from Mission Capital, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to model one of the most confusing parts of an LBO buyout model. So let's pretend I have a hypothetical company here that I've determined is worth $25 million, and I know that from doing some diligence over the last couple of months, and they also have an EBITDA of about $3.9 or $4 million. What I've done here is I've compiled my sources and my uses, and if you want to see some details on that, look through my profile for an older view, video on the sources and uses. But basically, I have to bring some cash to the deal to pay for it, and then that cash all has to go somewhere. Just like if you're gonna buy something from the grocery store, you have to bring your credit card or cash to pay for the groceries. And so, how do we model this? How do we bring the sources and uses that reflect the transaction into the balance sheet? Because this is one of the hardest parts of building out an LBO model. And the nice thing is you can actually break it down into seven steps. So I'm just going to go through them quick because this is a, you know, a video for social media. But the first thing is you eliminate the old co-cash. So I've got my balance sheet of what it's going to look like before the deal closes. And the first thing is get rid of the old cash. So I'm going to do a negative, do a negative on this, this cash. And then that comes out of the retained earnings. So I'm going to do equals and get rid of that cash. And so now I have a cash-free balance sheet that is in balance. Why am I getting rid of the cash? Well, because this is value the seller has created in the past, and that's value that they're entitled to. I'm not gonna keep that if I acquire this company. It's theirs, so they get to keep it. So that step is done. Just gonna check that off. Yes, you can use emojis in Excel, if I can just get this right. Okay, so then the next one is bring in the new equity. Well, I have the new equity here in my sources, right? I'm bringing that to the deal. So I'm gonna come over here, and the source is the new equity. I'm going to link to these right there. Just quickly do control D to bring them down. And then my offsetting entry here is the cash, right? This is cash coming into the business because I'm bringing in new equity. So that one's good. Then the next one is to bring in the new debt. Again, this is another part of my sources. I have new debt right here. And so I've created lines for them on the balance sheet. Again, a new source of debt. I'm going to put them right here linking to my schedule and quickly pressing control D to bring them in my offsetting entry again to the cash. I've brought this cash into the business. So that's done. But now I've got to pay the seller, right? All of this cash isn't going to sit on the balance sheet. It's not going to have 26 million. It comes in and it goes out to buy the business from the seller. So the next thing is now I have to buy out the old equity. So let's look at that. Here's the old equity. I'm going to come over here. Now I'm flipping over to the uses. So this is going to be negative contributive capital, the negative retained earnings. And then what I have to do is I have to calculate some form of goodwill because the fair market value of the equity that I'm acquiring is greater than the book value. You can see here the book value is only about 6.6, .6, but I'm saying the fair market value is 24.7. So that premium goes to the goodwill. So I'm going to say here's the fair value of the equity here but then I'm gonna strip out uh, what I've already purchased, which is the book value. And basically I'm calculating the premium. So that's the goodwill piece. Got that in there. And then I'm gonna pay off the old debt, right? Cause I'm bringing in new debt to the deal. So I'm gonna do negative the old debt. And now you can see the offsetting entries, right? Now the cash is starting to go out, right? I brought in the cash and now I'm paying off the equity, paying off the old debt to compensate the seller. So I've got that one done. Then the next is the transaction fees, which I have down here, diligence fees and sponsor fees. Those are uh, fees that I have to do to get the deal done. Those are gonna hit my retained earnings the second the deal closes. So it's the negative sum of my fees right there. Close that out. You can see that's in my retained earnings and now I'm paying that in cash, basically. And then lastly is the financing fees. So anything I raise in debt is gonna have a corresponding fee, which I have here. For this video, I am going to capitalize it um, in the asset section. There's new accounting rules to do this a little bit differently, but this is kind of how you used to do it. And just for modeling purposes, this is simpler. So this is going to come to the balance sheet. My financing fees, I'm going to hit enter. Again, that's cash I've paid out because I've brought it to the business. And now you can see left over on my balance sheet, I've got the 500 of cash, which is an entry that I specified here. And now I have my brand new balance sheet with a new cash balance new debt, and new equity. And so if I want to change my ending cash, it will change accordingly. See if I just make this a million. See now my ending cash is a million. So these are the steps that you have to go to go through to map out 
the sources and the uses on the balance sheet to reflect an LBO or a buyout. So we can just check these off because I'm a completionist. So again, I know that's a lot of detail for this video. This is one of the hardest parts of an LBO model. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.